And so let's do this together. First, we'll see that we need net operating working capital, which is given above, we're gonna pull together what are those elements of current operating assets, which include cash plus accounts receivable plus inventory. Those are all current operating assets minus the accruals and accounts payable. So those are the net operating working capital. Next is fixed assets, which we calculated directly. Now we can add those together and we get net operating capital. So that's it. So we'll do that, copy it. And we have forecasted net operating capital. Next we say, well, what is NOPAT? Well, we've already calculated that. So we just reference it. And what is the increase in net operating working capital? Oh, we need to do one more thing here. Is copy this backwards by one. Because the change is this year minus last year. That means this year, 2017, we grew by 112. And here we can see it. We went from 1120 to 1232, which means we need to invest another 112 to get from here to there. And the free cash flow all of a sudden turned negative. We had free cash flow from earning money, 99, but we need to spend 112. So we end up with a negative 13. And let's copy this across the years. And what we see is it turns positive next year and then it goes up to plus 48. Next, we can get NOPAT. And we could divide NOPAT by the operating capital. And that is our ROIC. So what do we see? The projections are done above and now we're just using those projections. We're not computing any new numbers. We're just summarizing in a specific way to get at free cash flows for the next four years. And we see it starts at negative and it starts making money in the three subsequent years. Then just for sake of comparison, we take the NOPAT divided by the invested capital and we see we're at 8% ROIC. This is gonna be important because that's not sufficient. That's not our target, but it is consistent with what we've done in the past.